This video is brought to you by Sayaride. In this video, we're gonna be showing you how to install a zippered roll-up window in a large piece of canvas. This process is not like the U-shape or smiley face window applications where you're installing a zipper in a window. We're gonna be installing this window to a piece of canvas. And that requires us not to cut out the canvas prior to basting or sewing around the outer perimeter of the window. If you were to cut out the canvas and then baste the window in place with the zippers already installed on the window, you would find that it would not be flat. So we're gonna show you the proper process to get this job done correctly. This type of window application sewing into canvas requires a lot of steps and they all have to be done in a particular order. Angela's gonna show us the process. The window should be cut to the size of the opening that you desire, but along the top and the bottom, the window will overlap the canvas by an inch. So if you want a window opening of 24 inches by 36 inches, you will add two inches to the height measurement, meaning you will cut the vinyl window to 26 inches by 36 inches. We've placed our cut vinyl window on top of umbrella to prevent scratching of the vinyl material, and we've used a one inch bias binding and applied the double-sided tape to the back side so that we could adhere it to the bottom edge of the vinyl window material. So this binding is flush with the bottom edge of the window material. This will be the outside surface. Now we'll flip the vinyl window material so that we're working on the underside surface and we're going to apply a looped Velcro to this. So we're applying the double-sided tape on top of the vinyl window material, peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue, and then we'll baste that Velcro. This is the looped Velcro to the bottom edge. We'll be using the deluxe five and a half inch magnetic sewing guide that's available from Sarite as a guide, kind of like a fence on a table saw. We've attached it to the Sarite 111 sewing machine with the MCSCR power system. Now we're sewing down the binding and the Velcro to the vinyl window material along the bottom edge and also the top edge. We typically find that the Velcro sews better if it's facing up, so she's flipped the panel here. Now she repositions the deluxe magnetic guide so that she can sew along this inner edge. If you do not have a magnetic guide like this, you could place masking tape on the bed of the sewing machine as a guide. No need to reverse to lock the stitch because the edges will be covered in a later step. Next, we're going to make some custom zipper facings. We're going to measure the height of the window here. We want those facings to be at least the height, plus an inch extra is a good idea. And we're going to make the width of those facings three inches. We're using the soapstone pencil and marking on some Sumbrella fabric. This is a marine grade fabric. After we've struck down our lines, we'll use the Sayerite Edge Hot Knife to cut each one of these facing strips out. The Sayerite Edge Hot Knife is great because it heats up in a few seconds and cools down in a minute or two. And this will seal the edge of this synthetic fabric so that it will not unravel. We're using the basting tape for canvas. This is a 3 8 inch wide and we baste it along one of the long edges of each one of those facing strips. We'll cut two lengths of zipper equal to the length of the facing strip. Then we'll use our seam stick for canvas, but we're going to use the quarter inch width here because we don't want the glue to get too close to the teeth of the zipper. We're going to apply it down all edges of the zipper flange on both the top side and the bottom side of the zipper. We're using a YKK number 10 Vislon zipper, though you can use a YKK number 10 coil zipper if you choose. These are continuous link zippers. No need to buy a finished zipper because they do not need to separate completely. Angela is using the Sarite Edge Hot Knife and she's making sure that the ends of the flanges do not unravel by touching them with the hot knife. Do not melt the teeth at this time. Now she's peeled away the transfer paper revealing the glue on these facing strips and she'll create a one inch hem on all four of the facing strips on one side only. Sumbrella is a 100% solution dyed acrylic and there are not many glues that stick well to it. Even double sided tape will sometimes struggle sometimes to stick to the fabric. So using a putty knife like this or a similar tool can help to keep the basting tape in place. Next we'll take one of those zippers, peel off the transfer paper on one of the flanges revealing the glue and we'll take one of those facing strips and place it on top of the zipper so the hem is on the inside and we'll make sure the hemmed folded edge is centered between the zipper teeth. We'll do that to each one of those zippers.
Once that's done, we'll repeat that process with the two other facing strips on the opposite side of the zipper. Because the canvas mostly conceals the teeth of the zipper, the zipper will last longer in high UV concentrated areas because the zipper is protected by the 100% solution dyed acrylic of the Sunbrella fabric. The zipper has been flipped to the underside. We'll peel off the transfer paper on one side of the zipper and then we'll fold the raw edge of the Sunbrella canvas over to the teeth, not directly over the teeth but almost right beside the teeth. The raw hot knifed edge of the Sunbrella canvas is about an eighth inch away from the teeth. Do this on both sides of the zipper on the underside and to both zippers. Our zipper facings are now complete. Now we can base the zipper facings to the vinyl window material. We're going to apply the 3 8 inch basting tape to the edges of the vinyl window material. You'll want to apply the double sided tape on the outside surface of the window. This is the outside surface because the binding is facing up. Now we'll apply one of those zipper facings that we made earlier. Angela's going to flip the window so that she applies it onto the outside surface but the inside surface is facing her. That way she can position the vinyl right where she wants it on the zipper facing. You need to apply the vinyl so that it, its raw edge is even with the raw edge of the umbrella that was put down in the earlier step. and follow that same procedure for the opposite end. Now that they're applied you can cut any extra that hangs over the edge of the glass of the custom zipper facings that you made. Some of the edges will be left raw, so take your Sayerite Edge hot knife, a wood burning tool, or a soldering gun and be sure to seal the edges of the Sunbrella fabric and the zipper flanges. Do not melt the teeth at this point because we still need to apply sliders. Now we'll use a one inch bias binding. We've applied double sided tape to that as well and based it along the inner edge. This is the underside of that window panel. We'll do that on both sides. We'll use the Sayerite Edge hot knife and we'll cut it so that this binding comes flush with the Velcro underneath this metal ruler. Remove the ruler and you'll see what I'm talking about. Follow that procedure for the opposite side as well. Next we'll be applying with basting tape a binding to the top edge. This is a one inch bias binding and we're applying it to the outside surface of the vinyl window material. Be sure to seal the ends of the binding by cutting them with a hot knife. We're using the Sarite Edge hot knife. If you don't have that, you could use a wood burning tool or a soldering gun. To protect the canvas, when we cut this binding, we're going to place a ruler in between it and the canvas underneath. This video was shot for you, our customer, so we're not sewing this vinyl window into a project. We've just taken some Sunbrella fabric as a blank and we're measuring up where we want the bottom edge of the vinyl window to be placed on this fabric panel. We're applying the 3 8 inch basting tape for canvas along that edge and then we'll apply the hook 1 inch velcro to that basting. This will adhere to the looped velcro that we've already sewn onto the vinyl window. The velcro should be cut to size so that it's even with the velcro that's already been sewn onto your window. It won't go all the way to the end of the zipper facings. Now we'll sew that velcro in place. This is very important. Sew only the bottom long edge. Do not sew the top long edge yet. That will be done in a much later step. And at the beginning and the end, reverse to lock your stitch in place. Now we need to start sewing the zipper facings to the window, but you only need to sew a portion of it. Do not sew it all down, otherwise you'll have problems. We've peeled back the uh, one inch binding on the outer surface 
uh, so we don't sew through that as you can see. And then we did some reversing at the top here and now we're sewing that one inch binding that is placed on the inside of the vinyl and we sew through the velcro at the opposite end and reverse to lock the stitch in place. We'll do that to the opposite end as well. And we want to sew both on the inner portion of that one inch binding and the outer portion of the one inch binding. In other words, both long edges. And do not sew anything more. Here's a side note here, that clicking noise when we sew, that means the needle point has been damaged. We need to replace it. Next, we'll apply a basting to the underside of the vinyl window along the two short edges and also along the top edge where that one inch binding was placed on the opposite side. So these are right along the edges. No. Now we'll fasten the Velcro to each other so the window is exactly where it needs to be. And you need to make sure the window goes down flat on top of your canvas panel. Make sure there are no bubbles in it. Remember, it is important to sew the window down prior to cutting out the canvas underneath the window. So she's peeling back the transfer paper that she's placed along all the edges, the top and the sides. She has did not place any double-sided tape along the bottom edge because she's using that Velcro there to hold it in place. Once you're happy and there are no bubbles in it, we'll take it to the sewing machine and we'll sew the outside perimeter of that custom zipper facing that we made. We will not sew the inner perimeter yet. Again, sew only the outside of this facing. Do not sew the inner one towards the zipper yet. And do that to both sides, reversing at the beginning and the end. Here we are sewing the other side, outside only. We'll have a little discussion a little bit later on towards the end of this video about the types of threads that can be used for this type of application. Here it is, outside only sewing. Lots of steps, lots of places to get confused, but follow this video and you should come out with a perfect zippered window. The panel's been flipped so the underside is facing up. And just going to feel for the center location of the zipper here on the sides. And then she's going to mark it with a soapstone pencil right where the center of the zipper teeth are. Angela's flipped the material up so she can show you where she's uh, marking it. Right in the center of the zipper teeth. She can feel it from this side of the fabric. On both the top side and the bottom side of where that binding was placed, she's going to feel for the inner edge of the binding and strike marks along that edge on the bottom side as well. Then she's going to use a straight edge and strike a line through each one of those marks on all four sides. Once that's done, she's going to measure over three quarters of an inch away from those lines and she's going to strike lines there as well. So she's marking all around the perimeter three quarters of an inch inside those edges she already struck down. And then she's going to use a straight edge and strike a line there as well. Now because the entire window is sewn into place we can cut out the canvas material from the back side. We're going to use a seam ripper here and Angela has peeled back some of the velcro so that she does not poke a hole in the vinyl window material and she's going to make a slit so she can insert scissors and she's going to cut along that inner line that we struck down with the soapstone pencil. We're going to be creating in a later step a mitered hem. Here on the sides you'll see a little bit of your facing, that's quite normal. So she's cut out that rectangle. Now she's going to concentrate on the corners and create a 45 degree uh, slit at each corner so she can create that single hem. Do not cut too deeply, only deep enough that you can create the three quarter inch hem or whatever it takes to line up that hem with the opposite fabric on the underside of this assembly. So notice how she's creating a fold so that it's even with the assembly on the bottom side of the glass. This will give us a finished look from both the inside and the outside. On the side she'll fold that fabric so that it is coming alongside the teeth just as the one inch binding uh, that has already been sewn down on the opposite side is uh, the same distance away from the teeth. So she's creating a fold so that it looks consistent from the one inch binding side to this side. That's perfect, just like this. 
And because she made that 45 degree slit at the corners, you can create this mitered hem. First, we'll sew the two sides of the zipper facing, not the top and the bottom yet. We're gonna do some reversing here to lock our stitch in place, and we're sewing approximately an eighth inch or a quarter inch away from the teeth of the zipper. Angela's using the foot on the Sierra 111 sewing machine with MCSER so that it rides right along the zipper teeth. Notice she's peeled back that binding along the top here. We don't want to sew through that yet. That will be used to cover up the end of this facing assembly. When you're done sewing those facings on, here's how it should open up to reveal the zipper teeth. We will be using a single pull non-locking slider. You could use a double pull if you want to gain access from both sides of the window panel. Be sure the puller is facing on the inside of the window if you use a single. With the zipper separated, push the slider onto the teeth so both sides of the teeth are even. This may require a helper as one person lines the teeth and the other one pushes the slider on. We're installing this non-locking slider from the top side of the window panel. This is the top edge, not the bottom edge. Before we sew the top edge, we're going to install a roll-up strap. We're going to use clear vinyl window material, and we're using a grease pencil here to mark on the material. Then we're going to cut it to approximately one and a half inches in width, and obviously it's longer than it need be. The grease pencil does not come up well on Sumbrella, but on vinyl it does come up well, especially if you use McLube. Now we'll reposition that one inch binding at the top that we've been avoiding this entire time and we'll sew it in place. We've uh, turned the window so that the underside is facing up and we'll install this roll-up strap underneath the edge of that mitered hem. Once it's in position, Angela will flip the window so she's working from the outside surface. She's going to take it to the sewing machine and she's going to sew that binding down in place. She's working from the top side so she can use the binding as a reference uh, where that stitch should be placed. Uh, go slow when you're sewing through the bindings on the side and then we'll sew all the way to the other side as well and at the end we'll reverse to lock the stitch in place. Now we can also sew the bottom edge as well. We'll sew right over that roll-up strap that secures it down way to the other end. We'll remove the window from the velcro on the canvas and we'll sew that unfinished edge that we left unsewn in the previous steps at the beginning. Be sure to reverse at the beginning and the end of your stitching. Here's what the inside surface looks like. If you would like you could create a reinforcing patch at the bottom edge of these corners. We chose not to do that. We're almost done. All we need to do now is install zipper stops and a snap to the roll-up strap. We're going to make a homemade stop. To do that, we're going to take two of the teeth that were left over from our continuous zipper and cut them with scissors. Then we're going to push them into the ends of the two teeth at the end on each side. We'll use a flat object like the end of scissors to push them together so they're mated. Then we're going to use the Sayerite Edge Hot Knife and we're going to cut the flange off and then we're going to melt those teeth together. This is a great way to create a zipper stop with extra teeth instead of having to buy your own stop and it actually looks pretty good. You'll notice that if you keep the hot knife on too long it will catch fire but you can blow those teeth out so they don't catch fire permanently and then melt the other side as well. It almost looks like a factory stop now. We'll push a stop on the other side of this zipper and we'll do that to the other side of the panel as well. We're going to use the Sarite Edge Hot Knife and touch any raw edges of the Sunbrella fabric using the ruler to prevent damage to the actual fabric panel. Now when the slider is used it'll run into those teeth and will not come off of the zipper. There are multiple ways to create a stop. You could use webbing, binding, or stainless steel stops if you choose. To install the snap into the roll-up strap, we're going to use the snap right system. We've inserted a snap stud into the snap right stud die. Then insert a snap right mandrel through the snap right eyelet die and place an eyelet snap onto the mandrel. 
Now position the mandrel tip at the correct location on the canvas project and push the mandrel through the fabric assembly. If you don't like the position, you can remove it and reposition the mandrel over and over until you're happy. Now all you need to do is position the snap right stud die over the mandrel and squeeze the lever of the riveting tool while holding the die flat on the fabric surface until the lever becomes rather hard to squeeze. The mandrel does not necessarily need to break. However, if you squeeze the lever hard enough, the mandrel will break, which is okay, as they are expendable. If it does not break, you may be able to use it over for about two to three stamps. Angela's applied enough pressure to break this mandrel, just to show you how it works. Now that she's separated the die from the stud, you can see the portion of the mandrel that's sticking through, and that's just on the bottom portion of the die. It set the fastener in perfectly. Now unzip the panel. You'll notice now that the slider polar is facing on the outside surface. That's because we're using a double polar here. Earlier, we installed a single polar. Angela will now roll the window up so she can determine how long the roll-up strap should be when it's snapped into position. All we're going to do with the uh, vinyl strap here is create a single hem so the snap is going through two layers of the vinyl. Yeah, so I'm here's where she's going to cut it. Uh, that's where she's determined that she wants the window to roll up and stop. We're going to remove the snap right stud die from the riveting tool and install the snap right button die onto this riveting tool. Any riveting tool will work with the snap right system. Snap a snap socket onto the socket die and insert a snap right mandrel through the die. We'll flip the panel so that we can more easily push the mandrel through that strap. We'll fold the end of the strap over to accomplish our one inch hem and then we'll position the socket die on the bottom side and push the mandrel through the vinyl material. We'll then install a snap right button into the snap right button die. Then as we did previously, we'll position this button over the mandrel and keep the die against the fabric assembly and depress the lever of the riveting tool. The lever may have to be depressed a few times until it becomes rather stiff. Then remove the uh, riveting tool and the die from the bottom side and the button and the socket are now installed appropriately. That's all there is to it. We're done. Next up, we're going to show the materials list that was used to build this window opening. And we also want to discuss the types of thread that can be used to sew this. Our project was sewn with the clear Tanara thread. Because this application is used outdoors, you must pick the correct type of thread to use. Three types of thread may be used. Each has disadvantages and advantages. The most popular is V92 polyester. It is a UV resistant but not UV proof thread. I would expect it to last two to three years in a tropical climate and maybe eight years elsewhere. Another is V92 anti-wick polyester. It's UV resistant and has a slight wax coating that prevents water from wicking into needle holes and also extends the life of the thread in high UV concentrated areas. The third choice is a Teflon thread like Tanara or Helios P. Those are lifetime threads. They do not rot and they are very chemical resistant. They are harder to sew with and more costly. If you follow all these steps in this video, you too should come out with a beautiful zippered roll-up window that is installed in a canvas application. I'm Eric Grant and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sayerite website or subscribe to the Sayerite YouTube channel today. It's your loyal patronage to Sayerite that makes these free videos possible. Thanks for your support.